Hello, how are you all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and I'm president of Automotive Test Solutions. Today, we're going to take a look at this 2000 Ford Focus. This vehicle has low power, he's not running very good, he's already been to several shops, and no one's been able to properly diagnose this vehicle yet. So let's take a look at this vehicle. The first thing that we want to do with a drivability problem is to connect the e-scan. The e-scan is a really good way to look at drivability problems so we have a good idea of what's happening right away. Now that we've connected this Ford Focus to the e-scan, we'll need to get some data from it. The e-scan, first off, in the lower corner says there's no code set in this car. But the monitors have been run, there's five. So someone has cleared these codes. The shop that I'm doing this job for said that when he got it, there was no codes and the monitors have been cleared. The reason that this has happened is due to a battery clear that the shop has tried to do to fix this vehicle. The first thing I want to do is I want to look at some data. So we're going to go to the sharpshooter. We're going to go to fuel trim. We're going to go to long term plus short term. And we're going to pick that. We're now going to start this test. And this test will start to load these cells as we drive the car. So what we want to do is just drive the car normally. This car has a low power problem. It's not running very well right now. So let's pull over and look at this data. As we can see, at the bottom, we're 11, 9, 2, it's all green. And then we go into the middle and we're adding 15, 18, 24, 21. And at the top, we're taking away minus 12, minus 21, minus 12. So at the bottom of this, we're not having much add. In the middle, we're adding 21%. And at the top, we're taking away 21%. So this is a pretty unusual chart. What we'll need to do now is we need to run the volumetric efficiency chart. So we're going to open up the volumetric efficiency tab. We're going to go over and we're going to select our motor. It's a 2 liter, 77 degrees, and we're at 5,000 feet in elevation. We're now going to go over and we're going to start the test by pushing the start test button. We have a pop-up. It asks us one more time on the data that we've just entered. This is very important data and it has to be entered right for the data to come out right now we're going to start to drive the car. You want to start to drive the car by rolling and then flooring the car and letting it pull up. The car is running very poorly and it's fallen down right there. Now let's go look at the data. We're going to stop and we'll analyze the data now. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop the test from running so we can look at this data. The yellow trace is actual airflow. The red trace is theoretical airflow. Now, if you notice what's happening right here is at the bottom, we're sort of close. But look at how much more theoretical air I have than actual. Then in the middle, we start to come closer. And then actual actually overreads theoretical. Notice the red is underneath the yellow. Now, so this has a problem, and when it came up to a point, the actual totally fell away, but the theoretical was still high. This is where the engine totally cuts out, like it feels like it's shutting off. Now we're going to look at the difference between the numbers. The difference is a lot at the bottom, and it's okay in the middle, and it's a lot at the top. The red is an indication that we have a large margin between theoretical, the red trace, and actual, the yellow trace. 
So what we've got going on is something that's creating an airflow problem to the engine. I want to look at one other thing before we're done with the scan tool and on this test drive. We need to check and see what our O2 sensors are doing. So I want to go to PIDs. I'm going to re-enable the info PID and then we're going to come up and we're going to pick graph. We're going to clear the graph so only the new data is plotted. We're now going to drive the car and we're going to open the throttle all the way wide open. Notice the car is having a drivability. It's not running well, but the O2 sensor is staying totally high. Let's stop and look at this data. Notice the fuel trim is trying to take away short term, but take a look at the O2 sensor. It went high and it stayed high the entire time. Now what that tells me is that I'm not shutting anything off. If the coils were shutting off or the injectors were shutting off, I would have a different kind of a problem. The O2 would fall. It would not stay rich. What I'm interested in doing with this car now is to check the exhaust for possible back pressure or possibly a cam that could be out of time. Now that we're off of our test drive and we're back at the shop, I want to make a couple of points very clear that we had with the e-scan. When we did the volumetric efficiency test, the actual airflow overflowed the theoretical air. That means more air than should have been flowing occurred. Then when the car totally fell on its face as we rev the engine as it continued to pull with the throttle open, actual airflow fell to almost nothing and theoretical was very high. Now if this would truly be the mass air sensor reading, what would have occurred is we'd be very lean. Now the fuel trims did not show that. And when we went and checked the oxygen sensor voltage, it stayed very high at almost a volt during the point this engine fell on its face. Now if the airflow would have been that low from the mass air sensor, the O2 could never stay fully rich. It would have fallen all the way close to zero. That isn't what happened. What happened is the air rate fell, but the O2 stayed extremely high. That means a lot of fuel is still being delivered into the internal combustion engine. What this makes me think is the cams are out of time. If the cat was plugged, it wouldn't have overflowed the airflow rate. That has something to do with the cam in the air that's flowing down through the induction system into the engine and then being expelled out the exhaust. If the airflow has a problem, they'll have different flow rates at different RPMs. That's what we're seeing. So what I want to do is we want to check the cams. We're going to do that with a very simple system where we pull a spark plug out of this head we're going to put in a compression hose. On this compression hose, we're simply going to put a pressure transducer. With this simple apparatus, we can not only check the cam timing, but we can also check the cat if it was plugged, the ignition timing. There's a lot of things that we can check with this, but what I'm really interested in checking right now is the cam timing. Now, this engine had no codes, right? And if the cam timing was off, it would set a code. What you have to think about is the computer that's watching this data is looking at the crank sensor and the cam sensor and it's comparing the count rate with an algorithm. But the sensor's on the intake cam. If the exhaust cam is off, the computer would never see it and this would be a very difficult problem then to find. What we want to do now is let's put the compression hose in and check the actual cam timing. What we're going to do now is to remove the spark plug from the cylinder head. Any spark plug will work. Just remove the spark plug. Now on a V engine, 
you'll have to check the cams on both heads if it's an overhead style cam engine. We're going to take the compression hose and we're just going to screw the compression hose in. We're going to take the pressure transducer and attach it. Now that we have the pressure transducer in cylinder number one, we need to check the cam timing. We'll use the e-misfire software to do this. It makes it very easy. Let's take a look at the software. I'm going to come to compression. I'm not checking a misfire. I want compression readings. I want to find the type of car, Ford. We need to now find the year of the vehicle, which is a 2000. We want to pick a dual overhead cam, 2 liter, and now we're going to say begin analysis. The data will be displayed for the cam timing up in the upper right hand corner. We're going to go to measure. I want to do a strip chart and I now want to turn on just the pressure transducer for the compression. We're going to start this car now. Is what we want to do now is I want to go to analyze data. Right away you see how the exhaust cam is way in front of the bottom dead center mark. Additionally the exhaust cam is being shown at being 59 degrees advanced. That's almost 60 degrees of advance. The peak that you see towards the center, this high pressure area right in the center of the screen, that's being caused because the cam is so far advanced that the exhaust valve is closed before the piston reaches top dead center. What we have here is an exhaust cam that is clearly too far advanced. What we need to do now is to take this engine apart and fix it. This diagnosis was easy with the EMIS Fire software and a pressure transducer. A camshaft like this would be a very difficult diagnosis. We handled this problem quickly and accurately.